Uh, welcome everyone to Forex SPV. Uh, my name is Mr. Wags and uh, uh, today I'm going to talk of pips and fair value prices. Uh, a, by definition, a pip is the smallest change in price in the forex market and is denoted using the four decimal places as 0 0.0001. So when price uh, changes maybe from 1.22 to uh, two, 3 going to 1.22 to 4, uh, that's one pip change. And fair value in the in the real world, you can you can define fair value as a, a price in the market, a price of a certain asset uh, that a willing buyer or and a willing seller agree upon. Like a willing buyer wants to buy an asset at uh, maybe uh, one thousand, and a willing seller wants to sell that. At 1000 and both of them enter the transaction freely so that 1000 is a fair value price and one of the importance of uh, these uh, financial markets is uh, for people to have price discovery so it's useful price discovery discovery so uh, for example this is uh, a market report for uh, yesterday for DSE so for example uh, if you want to know then uh, the price of uh, maybe uh, CRDB shares right now you simply go to the DSE website or you simply go to the uh, at one of the brokers website and to simply load up the charts and you can see clearly uh, that uh, the price is now 140. It's right here. So the price is now 140. And uh, this price changes according to the demand and supply in the market. So this is the price. So the opening the closing price are the same. So the closing price is the price. It's 140. Uh, if you go uh, maybe to uh, Vodacom, because uh, many are aware of uh, Vodacom shares, Vodacom now trades at 850. But uh, I remember uh, last month it was around 810. So uh, see the price of this, uh, the price of uh, Vodacom has risen. And you can see uh, this price has, this was the highest price uh, that has ever been reached by Vodacom shares. You can see uh, many traders start selling at this point. So it's the highest point uh, reached. You can see the outstanding offers that are there. And these offers are basically at market price. And there is no uh, bid, so people are not buying so the offers will simply remain there until a buyer comes in or maybe the sellers uh, decide to sell at a lower price so buyers are attracted to that and buy at that specific price. So in, uh, you can clearly see that uh, in this market, in, uh, in there is some stock exchange. Uh, how the shares are matched is uh, in form of an auction. So uh, there has to be a willing buyer at the same price, uh, matched by a willing seller at the same price. But uh, it's different from the Forex market where we have market makers who stand on the other side of the trade. So they stand to complete uh, the transaction. So once you buy, uh, we have the first uh, liquidity that they need to buy. Maybe you buy at 1.2 to uh, two, two, 3. So at this price, you enter your buy order. So you're willing to buy at this price. So they first look at a willing seller at the same price. If there is no willing seller, then they will take your 
they'll take your trade. Uh, but uh, if they take your trade and they're not interested by your trade, then later on, they can shift your trade to another another trader who will enter maybe sales at this specific price. So uh, they match your order like that. And we have uh, market makers, uh, we can also call them as uh, liquidity providers, but in DSC we have lack of market makers. So this is an opportunity uh, for Tanzanians uh, who wish to uh, to develop our local currency market. So we have the gap there on the part of the market maker. So if you're willing enough, you can uh, take the courses and uh, become market maker. So let us look on the CRDB, how, how the day went. Huh? So we have uh, the opening price as 140, the closing at 140. This was the highest price reached. And this was the lowest price reach, 140 and 135 respectively. And the turnover is around that. We had two deals. And at these two deals, uh, resulted to this turnover. And we have uh, the outstanding bids and outstanding offers. So these outstanding bids and offers, they are not much because their prices differ. Uh, for example, one wants to share uh, to sell at 135 and the other ones to buy at maybe 130 and all that. So they cannot be matched. And the market capitalization is, uh, this is in terms of billions. So this is a trillion dollar. I mean, uh, not a dollar, trillion t shillings. So for, uh, for prices trading uh, below, 500, I mean for shares trading below 500 QZS. So as a share price, uh, the, uh, the changes, uh, the changes in price goes by five points. Like, uh, you can see here the lowest was 135 and the highest is 140. You will never find 136 or 137 or 141. It will go from 135 to 140, to 145, uh, to 130. So it will change by five points. So, and if you go higher, you find uh, the changes go to 10 points, to 20, maybe 200 points. So as the share price uh, goes higher. So it's quite different from the Forex market where we have the smallest change, which is 0 0.0001. And uh, even the derivatives market, uh, the one that are, the one that is uh, in this OT, OTC markets, send over to the counter markets, uh, they also have uh, changes in terms of uh, pips and all that. So pips and points, but uh, they have the smallest change simply because they are derivative products. Uh, but uh, uh, the respective shares uh, in Tanzania, uh, they they rise by points of five, going to 10, going to 20, going to 100. Uh, but in, uh, in Forex market, we have change, uh, which is in terms of uh, pipet, PIP. So this is USDJPY. Uh, in the Forex market now, uh, there are times when you find the market buying uh, when only buyers have entered the market and they have not much, uh, they have not been matched by the sellers. So are those, I mean, those, uh, those prices are not sufficiently traded for fair value. So they are not fair value prices. Like if you see a bull candle like this, uh, here we, it simply means the number of buyers is greater than the number of sellers. And uh, the market now in, in the future will find a way to fill in uh, these buyers with sellers. 
and we call it uh, internal liquidity. And the point to take is that uh, in order for uh, the prices in the stocks maybe to move from 135 to 140, a certain threshold level has to be reached. Like a certain number of shares uh, needs to be bought at a higher price in order for uh, the shares to rise. So a certain threshold uh, needs to be met. Like maybe, maybe 1 million people are buying shares in uh, shares of CRDB. So uh, those willing buyers, uh, those bulls will move the market at a higher price. And that's how uh, the market is moved by speculators. But uh, sometimes the market may rise because of the fundamentals. Like there's a certain change in the, and the administration, maybe there's a change in the CEO, or uh, we have the quarterly market reports and all that. So you find uh, prices uh, changing because of the fundamentals. But for speculators to move uh, the market, I mean, to, to, to have a change in price, uh, speculators need to enter orders at a certain threshold. And the same is uh, in the Forex market. Like in order for a PIP to change, in order for one PIP to change, a certain load size needs to be entered. Uh, we know that a standard load is, uh, is equivalent to 100,000 contracts. So a certain threshold needs to be met in order for one PIP to change. And I'm not sure exactly on how many contracts need to be reached as a threshold so that a PIP to a PIP to be changed. But uh, according to what I've learned is that uh, it's quite higher than uh, what uh, is required in the stock markets. In order for the currency exchange uh, exchange rate to change, then the number of contracts needs to be uh, higher than uh, higher than uh, what uh, is occurring in the stocks in order for a stock price to change. So uh, the daily turnover to be 5 trillion. Uh, I know that Forex market is the most liquid. It has a 5 trillion daily turnover. In order for that to be reached, I mean, uh, the number of cont contracts entered a day in the Forex market is very high. So the five trillion dollar turnover a day simply means the number of contracts that are entered in a day are high. And there are too many and uh, uh, that simply means uh, a PIP change requires uh, a very high number of contracts. So uh, you should value a PIP. So if you get 10 PIPs, 20 PIPs, you should value them. Like that, it's not uh, it's not a few pips, and usually uh, institutional traders take a very few number of pips with a very large contract. And if they enter their orders and uh, maybe uh, their orders have uh, been rejected and there is a change in a pip, then that would affect his margin and profit targets. So, uh, you find a range like this with a certain number of pips that uh, only buyers are seen. Uh, this create what we call a fair value gap. A gap that needs to be filled by sellers. So at a later time, you find the market moving down, coming in to fill this, uh, these buyers. And the market makers are the one repricing to these levels so that they can fill this in order for uh, these levels to be uh, fair value prices. And if you look at the way uh, the market was, I was moving down here. If you look at the way the market was moving down here, the market was slowly 
falling, like uh, the first candle was to fill in the recovery gap from these uh, green candles. So they are willing by this point, and then the uh, tellers came in to fill. And we had a body here of sellers. Uh, but uh, we had uh, the market first moved up, so we had uh, the market maker repricing uh, to this level where we had sellers filling with buyers and then uh, sellers came in. And uh, the set, I mean, the third candle here, and the third candle. So on the third candle here, you can see uh, as it started falling, first uh, market makers repriced, filling this body of sellers, and then went down. So we had sellers in, in. And then we had another body of sellers. So this created also the value gap. And Right after creating this uh, liquidity, uh, like avoiding liquidity, um, the market again came to rise. So market makers repriced, and they repriced to fill in the travel gaps, and then they went down. Again, we had a week, and then sellers came in. Again, we had sellers, then we had buyers to come in to fill, they came into view. We can see uh, as the market was falling, all these prices were filled in by buyers and sellers to become fair value gaps. So sometimes now uh, you may find, sometimes you may find a wide range, yeah? like a wide range of candles uh, shown like uh, we have buyers maybe, or we have sellers as a wide range. And later on, you'll find the market uh, retracing to come in to fill those uh, buyers or sellers. So that simply means uh, the retracement simply means the market makers are willing to reprice to those levels that are not sufficiently traded for fair value. And uh, the only problem is that there is no specific rules on how this uh, market fills in these fair value gaps. Uh, but uh, what, to, what to note uh, from what I've seen is that uh, there are certain certain times in the year where uh, participants in the market usually are decreased. So when participants in the market decrease, you may see the COT report, open interest has decreased. And these are uh, usually during the seasonal change orders. So when you see uh, times like that, you should be aware of uh, of what will be happening in the market. So what will be happening in the market is that you find uh, the market is consolidating, but you find the market rising, but retracements are way too much. Simply uh, the liquidity voice that are created here are the same one uh, that the market, are the same that uh, the market will come in to fill for liquidity, to go and buy. Uh, so, when a swing is created going up, you find uh, retracements coming in. And it would take uh, quite a number of hours or days for this swing to be completed compared to uh, the times when the, uh, maybe the open interest is increasing. So the number of participants in the market is quite higher when you find, if I find a pattern, then the market will simply move in your direction. But uh, there are times in the year when you find the pattern is formed and uh, the market simply moves, find it comes down again, moves, 
like uh, the the retracement are way way uh, bigger than uh, than when uh, the open interest is high. I mean, when the participants in the market are higher. And when the participants on the market are higher, usually the dealer seeks only the external liquidity uh, compared to internal liquidity. And uh, from the stock markets, we can, uh, from what I showed you on the on the DSC uh, market report, uh, we saw that uh, people are using pendings, like. Most traders in the stock market are using pending orders, and most uh, and institutional traders usually also use pending orders. So they use pending orders at most. A pending order simply means uh, an order with specific price, and sometimes it has specific timing. Like if this number of hours are not are, are met and uh, the, my, my order is not taken, then I simply cancel the order. I wonder if I'll come, to, uh, I'll host a webinar to talk on that. Uh, I'll host a video to talk on, to talk on uh, the market orders. And we have quite a number of market orders and I'll explain how uh, the spending orders work and like okay, uh, orders at current market price. And I'll explain it uh, from institutional context, not from a uh, retail context, which you know. Uh, most of you know the retail context. So uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, you can join us on Telegram at ForexSPV, follow us on Instagram at ForexSPV, or visit our website www.forexspv.com. I uh, visit the blog posts. Uh, we update the blog posts usually on uh, Wednesday and Sundays. So there you may find uh, some contents and all that. And all important updates are usually uh, host, uh, I usually post them in my Telegram channel. So thank you for listening. Until next time.